This Thank conference you. will now be recorded. I guess we're only, are we waiting on Judy? Is she on the phone? Judy's yeah. I'm here. Judy's here. Hi, Judy. We ready to go, Chief? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, so, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to call the police commission meeting for May 27, 2020. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we're doing this meeting by go to meeting. Uh, the meeting was uh, noticed. Uh, on the police commission website, uh, among other places, um, I presume, with, as we've done in the past, that notice was also posted uh, at the police commission building. Um, and so, with that introduction, um, we will do the pledge of allegiance. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'll I'll do it on my own, and I just ask that everyone listen and follow along. Um, in the past, when we've done these meetings with everybody doing the pledge at one time, it gets a little chaotic. So, um, and the other thing I'm going to do, so that everybody doesn't have to watch me stand up, is turn off my camera. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all if you would all join me in a moment of silence to be in remembrance of our troops in harm's way our first responders um, health care workers uh, as well as our own uniformed officers and non-uniformed officers or non-uniformed um, employees Okay, thank you everybody. Um, and again, I apologize for turning my camera off, but I didn't need everybody to see me stand up and I've seen too many Saturday Night Live skits of Zoom meetings where <laughs> things go a little haywire. Uh, <laughs> next, up, next up on the agenda is the approval of our meeting minutes. We'll take these uh, one at a time. Uh, the first is the approval of the meeting minutes for the February 26, 2020 meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? I move that we approve the February 26th meeting minutes. And I'll second the motion. Uh, any discussion or comment uh, from anybody? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Uh, next up is the approval of the meeting minutes for April 22nd, 2020. Uh, do I have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of April 22nd. That motion, any comments, questions from any of the attendees at our meeting today? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so, Chairman's report. Uh, be very frank, I've got very little to report um, other than I uh, am sure that you are all aware uh, that while the governor's declaration that Chester County will be moving to yellow doesn't necessarily apply uh, to uh, municipal governments and their operation, nor the WeGo department and its operation, it does mean uh, that the citizens of Chester County are going to feel um, released, so to speak. Um, so I imagine, Chief, that things may start picking up for you a little bit. Um, I just am hopeful that everyone uh, is mindful. Uh, we still are in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic. 
uh, we should still be listening, uh, social distancing uh, where appropriate. Um, that being said, hopefully people uh, will uh, start loosening up and getting out, uh, being smart, and um, you know, take advantage of the nice weather, so to speak. Uh, next up is the review of the approved bills. We've got six dates worth of bills to approve. So I'm going to suggest we take them all at one time. I'll make the motion to approve. Or, yeah, to approve the bills we've already reviewed and blessed. Uh, February 11th, February 25th, March 10th, March 24th, April 7th and April 21st. Do I have a second? I second the motion. So any questions or comments from anybody uh, participating in our Zoom meeting or not our Zoom meeting, go to the meeting? I, I have one uh, comment. Uh, thank you for the, um, uh, I think, uh, who did it? Kathy did the uh, review of all of the bills um, the legal now. bills, yeah. The, yeah. If you're talking I, about the legal bills, yeah, that was me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm good with it. Okay. Um, so hearing or seeing no comments or questions from anybody, uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the Township Roundtable. Uh, let's start with East Ocean. Rick? Uh, just report that on Paley Pike in front of the township building, fires will be restriping. So they're going to actually start work on our trail. So other than that, um, things are fairly quiet. Okay, thanks, Rick. Anybody questions uh, for Rick? Okay, seeing here none. I'll move on to Judy Thornberry. Um, as with everyone else, the road programs are going to be starting. And uh, fortunate or unfortunate for us, uh, we'll, we'll be doing quite a bit of work on South Concord Road in the area of Old Bailey. Uh, so there'll be a number of closures coming in for the safety of the workers in there. Um, and the other one, which Ted Lewis is aware of, is we continually have complaints of heavy truck traffic on South New Street. Uh, it looks like it's part of the Toll Brothers construction, I believe, in East Bradford. Um, but the police have been reporting on it, and thank you for your assistance on that. That's all I have. Everything is full beans here. Okay. Any thank, thanks, Judy. Any any questions, comments for Judy? Hearing seeing none. Uh, last but certainly not least. Uh, Mr. Pigar, West Town Township. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, like pretty much everyone else, it's uh, been quiet here in the township. I uh, can report, though, a few uh, traffic signal improvements that are ongoing. Uh, one is the um, adaptive signal uh, system on Route 202 from Matlack Street all the way down to Route 1. I think there was a some sort of inspection last week, maybe it was. I did not attend it. I suppose Mark Gross from our office did, is that project advances to be fully operational, which would be good news because it helped move traffic, although traffic on 202 is significantly reduced over what's been normal. And so that's number one. And number two, the uh, inter new traffic signal at Westchester Pike and 352 West um, is uh, under construction and installing um, the uh, signal poles, the foundations, and the contractor informed us today that that project could be a month ahead of schedule they anticipated because of the delivery of the signal poles are being delivered a month early. Uh, and, and that's it, I have nothing else to report. Thanks, Rob. Any questions, uh, comments for Rob? Okay, let's move on to the next agenda item, which is the Chief's report. Uh, with regard to compliments, we've received numerous compliments within the last month. I expect to have them out to the commission within the next seven days. Uh, the majority of them are uh, accolades to the officers for doing uh, birthday drive-by celebrations. 
uh, the residents uh, really appreciate it and it's helping to lift their spirits a bit. So we're always glad to do that. And with regard to complaints, we don't currently have any internal affairs, investigations or complaints pending in the department. Okay, any questions for the chief on her report or concerns? All right, Chief, I, I have one for you. Um, this is somewhat related to the graduation. So I know, I think each high school uh, has a graduation parade scheduled. Yes. Uh, for Rustin, have you, I, I presume the districts reached out to you? Yes, they did. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a meeting today and I'm hoping that uh, tomorrow I will be able to hear how the meeting went. They anticipate there'll be roughly 300 vehicles, so it'll be a lot like a heavily attended football game. But the school has involved us, and um, I think we'll be able to adjust accordingly. So do you know, what, what are they planning? Is it, I mean, in 30 seconds or less, are they just, are they gonna do a parade through the rusting grounds? Well, um, each family will come in a car, and as you approach, they will hand you basically a blank diploma cover, and then um, you will stand and get out of the car, take a quick picture. That's what they were originally discussing. So then there'll be somebody videotaping that, and they'll turn it all into like a, some sort of production that the students will be able to see later. That's what originally was being discussed, but um, since they had the meeting today, I, I don't know what the final outcome of that discussion was. Yeah, I, I'm just curious if you end up with, you know, a car full of juniors who know particular seniors, and then they end up, you know, parking somewhere, or I, I don't know. Well, we, we had a lot of security concerns also, um, and I'm sure that they were addressed today. But I'll be able to send something out to the police commission by the end of the week, if you're interested, to give you more details. Yeah, I, I would like that. Okay, um, let's move on to old business. Uh, first item is the part-time update. Um, currently, all of our part-time officers are, are doing well. Um, we recently had an officer announce that uh, they would be leaving us for an extended period of time due to maternity leave, but they anticipate that they will return to us um, next year, um, which further makes our part-time officer complement a little low. But due to our staffing, uh, it hasn't had any impact on our overtime or operations. Um, in summary, I, I believe that as soon as we are released to the yellow phase, we're going to look at uh, starting a selection process for a new pool of part-time officers. Any questions, comments for the chief on that? Okay, let's move on to the roof repair update. Rob, you see it. Looking at it right now, the roof is 100% complete. Uh, I don't believe a final invoice has been submitted yet. Looks great. I cannot attest to how well it functions in the rain, not having been in the building. Only the chief and uh, Kathy and others can do that. Um, and uh, so far, so good. I, yep, I, I, I guess I would ask to hear from the chief and, 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 and Kathy about how you're doing inside there with the new roof. There is one little issue that I need to bring to your attention. Uh, within the last seven days, uh, we've become aware that our portable radios do not transmit effectively. Um, as a result, we've reached out to Metro for an estimate for a bi-directional amplifier. Uh, when we get that estimate, we will provide it to the police commission. Uh, we used to have a bi-directional amplifier that worked with our old radio system. And because of that, uh, a lot of the wiring, et cetera, is in place. And we're hoping that because we have some in place, the estimate for the bi-directional amplifier will not be too bad. 
but until we receive it, we don't know. Are, are you reasonably confident that that will uh, solve the issue? Yes, yes. Um, we didn't anticipate the metal would impact radio transmissions as much as it did. Okay, anything else uh, with regard to the roof? Uh, nothing. Let's move on to uh, Westchester Area School District request for additional school resource officer. Um, Chief, you have anything new to add? It's that we discussed at the last police commission meeting, which is that the matter would be brought back to the attention of the two uh, township boards. Um, and in particular, the request that the school district wants a designated SRO uh, at each of the two secondary schools, being Stetson and Ruston. That's all I know. Have the townships had any discussion on that request by the school district? The short answer is we have not, Chief. Okay. And it's, we have not. In the, at the West Town level, West Town Board, uh, nor has there been a joint meeting um, as of today. Okay. So I guess we'll have to table that until the townships can meet. Uh, the, the schools don't need anyone right now, right? No. But I mean, one thing you need to realize is most school districts require that um, school resource officers have certification through NASRO um and that certification is not something you can get overnight so if that is something that the townships are going to agree to um and give two additional school resource officers we would have to get another officer trained and um at this point because of the pandemic there is no training being offered and it, it creates some logistical issues so that's why making a decision now about whether that's a direction the townships want to move is important to me because I, I want to be able to meet those obligations. Okay. This is one that's going to have to be raised up to both boards at the next joint meeting, which as of now, um, probably starting to populate an agenda for that meeting. Okay. Any questions or comments on anyone else about that matter? Uh, all right, uh, last item for old business is a COVID-19 update. I sent something out about a week ago to the township managers, which I believe was uh, circulated to everybody. Uh, in summary, uh, about a month ago, the county started offering testing most of our uh, officers and administrative ta uh, staff took advantage and took the testing. Um, so far, we have not had any officers test positive. We had one administrative staff test positive. That person has completed their quarantine and has returned to work, but because it's administrative staff, it's remote work for the most part. Um, a lot of people have been asking us about numbers. When we get down further into the statistical reports, you're going to see that our overall numbers for calls are pretty significantly reduced. But the one thing that I wanted to point out in the email that I sent was that uh, we're concerned because uh, child abuse calls are up, domestic calls are up, uh, a lot of other things are up. So we are looking forward to a return to normal operations. And we currently are working on a plan to return to normal operations that will ensure both the public and the officers and the administrative staff safety. If there's any questions on the email, I, I could answer that, but I, I don't wanna be redundant and reread it to everybody. Questions for the chief on the COVID-19 update? Okay, 
let's move on to new business and we have no new business scheduled for today which takes me to any other matter um and in the absence of no new business i can't imagine we have any other matter i have one ah sure you do i i just want to make a public announcement to congratulate the chief on her doctorate she graduated in may and unfortunately None of us have been able to celebrate with her yet, but we will when everything gets back to normal. Drinks are on me. <laughs> well, you look smarter. I didn't know what it was. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree. I echo uh, Kathy's sentiments. And I just, we're going to need to figure out if we call you Dr. Chief <laughs> or, or Chief Doctor. Chief yeah. Doctor. Me. I really don't. I'm just <laughs> glad to be done with the program. All right. Uh, officers' comments? Uh, officers today. So that takes us to statistics reports. Okay. Let me scroll through. I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy by scrolling through them doesn't allow me to do it easily. Uh, okay, bear with me. I'm trying to get the statistical reports up. Uh, okay. Okay. Bear with me here. Okay, still not allowing me to scroll. Here we go, monthly activity report. As you can see, uh, East Goshen had 351 incidents for the month of April, which is down from the previous month. And we scroll to Thornbury, 55 for April, and Westtown, which is 220. When you look at the, the decrease, we went from 867 in February and 143 in March to a hitting a low of 638 incidents for the townships. With regard to trends, um, there are no significant trends that I would really point out, except it's interesting because everybody's home that we're getting a lot more fraud reports. And I don't know if that's because people are home answering their phones when they normally wouldn't be or because they're on their computers and they're seeing email scams. But uh, we are getting more frauds in all three townships, especially the Bitcoin blackmail scam. If, if anybody was reading our police blotters, we had a significant during the month of April and the early part of May, but it started to calm down. And, and the vast majority of those occur uh, from overseas. The year to date report. I'll scroll through that quickly. Are there any questions on anything that you're seeing in this data? Nothing? Okay. There's nothing unusual there, is there? No, there, there's nothing really there. Like, you know, I just like to point out that overall calls are down um, because people, like, obviously, crashes. Our crashes dropped significantly because not as many people are driving. Um, so I didn't expect anything unusual there with the calls being down. With regard to uh, the traffic enforcement citations and warnings, um, one of the things that you're going to see is predominantly it's monitoring traffic as opposed to citations. We had to change our protocols that unless it's a serious traffic offense, like you suspect DUI or it's a road rage or something else egregious, pretty much we've told the officers not to stop vehicles. That's not only for their safety, it's because a lot of uh, initially individuals are very concerned about having interaction with police officers and handing their documents and having the officers touch them and hand them back. So when we begin to move out of the red stage, I anticipate that that will change. 
uh, primarily traffic. You'll see there's very little traffic work because traffic doesn't just monitor traffic. They issue citations and we've told them not to. So we've been using them to supplement uh, the patrol. They go out and handle calls and help the, the patrol with a lot of the calls. But the one thing I'm happy about is even though it's primarily monitoring traffic, we're putting marked cars in the areas where there's traditionally a lot of uh, violations and also crashes. So in each county, got representation. So I'm happy about that. We're hoping that our presence has helped to, to drive down the crashes. And also, if any of you have driven, you've noticed that people are driving at speeds that they previously have not driven at because they could not drive at that, particularly on 202 and 3. Um, so putting the officers there, we're trying to keep people from getting too out of control. Um, hearing no questions on that, I'm going to move to the PPUs. Uh, the split between West Town and East Goshen is still a little off, but it's slowly starting to return to the requested. Um, if you look at the bottom, you see that West Town has dropped 0.46 since uh, the end of March. So we are becoming closer and closer to the agreed upon split between the two townships. But the one thing that I want to warn West Town about is that um, your numbers for May are not going to be as promising because of the incident with the arson and the kidnapping and assault that occurred before that. Uh, those were um, high volume hours for responding to them, but we're happy that uh, the individual is in custody who we believe was responsible for both of those and uh, he will be extradited back to Pennsylvania. So with regard to the Thornberry, um, the numbers are still a little low for the hours of service. We made an adjustment at the beginning of May. I'm hoping that the next time that we meet, I will be able to report that that adjustment has uh, given Thornberry closer to the contractual amount of hours that they're entitled to. Are there any questions on PPUs? Okay. Then I'll get to the budgetary stuff and I'll leave that to Kathy. Okay, the uh, April month end report, we, our payroll expenses show that we're over budget by 1%, but technically with the um, miscellaneous line item where we're entirely refunded, we are slightly under budget. Uh, benefit expenses were under budget by 7%, but that'll um, come around by the end of the year. Our vehicle expenses are over budget by 6%, and that's mostly because all of our vehicle replacement expenses are in the first six months of the year. And our total other expenses are under by 2%, which is uh, Bottom line, our total budget is under by 2%. So we're doing very well for the month of May. For in the month of May, sorry. Especially when you consider that we have had other expenses related to COVID that were not budgeted for. Right. And uh, we are keeping a, a, a running total of everything that's related to COVID and the expense. As we get it, we put it on an Excel spreadsheet. And um, so we'll be able to give, provide that um, when this is all over, just so you have that information. Yeah, Chief, Chief and Kathy, uh, with regard to that point, uh, the COVID-19 specific expenses, um, yeah. there are, are gonna be sources for uh, reimbursement, grants. Correct. Um, so keeping, you know, the apples and apples in that spreadsheet is going to make your life infinitely easier when we're making reimbursement requests. Yeah, that happened to us um, a long time ago when we had that big hailstorm, I think it was. The government right. was 
I think it was the hailstorm. Then we had to go back and start jigging things up. So this time I um I said let's start from the beginning. So we just everybody that has an expense sends it and we put it on an Excel spreadsheet. So it'll it'll be easy. Okay, any other questions or comments for Cassie? Kathy, anything else to add? Uh, no, I just I have a question. I just had about the um, officers receiving pay from out of the arbitration award. When does that take place and hit the budget? I'm gonna. I made the change before I went on vacation to their pay for the May. I think it was the 15th or 16th. So they began to get their new rates. All their back pay will be paid to them in June. It's gonna take a couple of weeks for me to. Um, to do it since um, since the ruling came back that there are uh, the new the guys in the step raises get their step raises on their anniversary date rather than January, so it's a lot more um, a lot more difficult to put all that together. But it'll be done in the month of June, and you'll see what that cost us. other questions for Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. Let's move on to action items. Any action items? I have nothing. All right, hearing none, we'll move on to public comment. Any public comment from anybody? Going once, going twice. Okay, um, so the last uh, item, last two items, um, we have an executive session. Uh, we will go into executive session after the meeting is adjourned. At the executive session, we have um, a couple of legal matters as well as a couple of personnel matters that will be discussed. Uh, so having the exec session at this will adjourn uh, this police commission meeting. Thank you all for participating in the uh, live and public part. And uh, with that, Chief, if you could drop off the people who are not exec session. I'm also going to stop the recording at this point. Yep, that'd be great.